I'm going to go live a little bit early today. I know if it's scheduled for 8.30, but um, I don't know. Just feel like jumping on. The replay will always be available. I'll tweet this out. We'll hang out for a little bit. Um, wait for some people to join. No, that's not what I'm looking for. All right. I think that just got tweeted out. Um, but we'll look at these two stakes races today. I won't. Um, I have the replays pulled up, so we'll go over the races. We'll look at the plot. Um, I just have the the Southwest on the screen right now um, as a backdrop. But we'll go over that race. We'll watch the replay, um, and most importantly going through these races is, you know, figuring out what to do with these horses going forward. Because with the prep race series, obviously, you know, the horses need to win the race. They need to get the points. But, um, you know, the end game is Kentucky Derby. So, you know, trying to see where these horses are in terms of their progression, um, learning, you know, about their quirks, kind of trying to figure out, are they a classic type horse? Maybe they need shorter. And then again, you know, we're, we're going to, a lot of these horses are going to kind of find they're not on this level. They're not on this distance. Um, and so there, there's still some quality horses, but you know, where, where do they, where do they belong? necessarily so you know maybe maybe a horse coming out of one of these races we're not going to see as a derby horse but could be effective cutting back to one turn or racing on the turf or um more effective just with some some type of changes equipment rider um etc so i think that's important and that's probably you know doing trip notes going through all this is is really kind of understanding those those nuances because the obvious trouble like you know we all know trouble when we see it. it it rarely flies under the radar when it's like that real legit obvious trouble and so the chart comment will pick it up everybody watching races will pick it up especially on the bigger circuits where you have um you know a lot of eyes on it a lot of top handicappers on it so it's that, those more subtle nuances understanding when horses are going to improve regress um or stay the same um just an important tool for doing trip notes that sometimes gets that gets missed because we want to talk about those like those really sexy trips that had to steady and do this do that um and sometimes create create stories that don't necessarily exist in the in the trip note you know for where, what really matters um I'm gonna hang out a little bit i know there's one viewer on right now and again i'm starting early so i have the stream scheduled for 8 30. um i might just change that and just not put a time and just kind of keep it as like a sunday show um i know it can be a little bit early for for people on the um uh, on the west coast but anyways let's let's kind of dig into it since i have the southwest um pulled up right now and again i'll, I'll move the replay over in a second but let's uh let's start by looking at the plot and I, I didn't, I kind of cut out the stream a little bit early. I was like super tired. My dog was like, I need to go out. But I handicapped this race both on circles and squares and um, live on the stream because it was, you know, in my opinion, pretty straightforward and it played out pretty straightforward. As we can see on the plot, again, if you're kind of new on here, we use this sort of like um, Olympic medal type series with it's like a win, play, show, gold, silver, bronze, um, essential quality. Um, the winner of the race fit well on the on the plot in terms of having some tactical speed, obviously has finished with that square and just kind of got the trip um, as as kind of drawn up on the plot. Number four, uh, Jackie's Warrior looked to kind of be like that sort of lone speed, um, went out to the front, had had some mild pressure, but pretty much on his own. Um, number seven, Spielberg finished second. I thought it was a good race from him. Again, we'll watch it. But he broke slow and then kind of had to move wide. So not quite um, pushing the pace that, that sort of was kind of projected on here, but, but still a good race. Um, uh, Etc. So I don't want to get into it too much uh, before watching watching the replay, but I did want to kind of give kind of an overview of the plot before we watch the replay um, and kind of getting into into the race. So um, let me pull that. Let's see. 
just kind of drag that over. Make sure I have the right one. Hopefully it's it's not too not too glitchy. Um, but you know, working working with what working with what we've got here. So, um, all right, I'll keep the sound off and just kind of talk over the replay. Um, uh, I watch replays with the sound off, anyways. I think uh, I have much respect for race callers, but I think sometimes too it can get a little distracting and think things are happening when they're not, or making it more exciting than than maybe it is. Um, I don't know. I kind of like just like the raw the raw version, but um, if you want to pull it up on your own and watch the sound, oh what the fuck? Okay, here we go. Thought we we're gonna lose this uh, feed for a second. <laughs> All right, three acting up a little bit in the gate, but it settles. Nope, acts up again. All right, so you can see Spielberg breaks slow there. Um, it was kind of projected in quadrant one. But four, going out to the front, Jackie's warrior. The six, um, pushing the pace, um, one of those that wasn't necessarily, like, expected to be. Pause it. Pause it. <laughs> All right, make sure I got the right freaking screen. Um, wasn't necessarily projected to be forwardly placed, but again, you can kind of see, um, ha showed a little bit, do we need the grid? Let's go to the grid. Uh, lightly raised type, um, was a little bit forwardly placed in his debut at Remington Park and then broke slow. So when you have a horse that's kind of lightly raced, um, sometimes the plot is not quite showing like the horse's full run style, but um, I, I think that was an overall kind of change in change in running style for um, for him today to go out go out and push the pace um, in that case. But the two was kind of in that uh, quadrant three spot, stable mate to Jackie's warrior, um, chasing kind of in a pocket. The three I thought they would probably want to show a little bit more speed coming off the layoff and running in this spot, but kind of took hold. You can see the three right here, kind of behind in between horses. Um, again, not as assertive as I kind of expected or probably for this horse's best chance. Probably overall needed the race coming off the bench. You can see essential quality starting to move up stock outside, um, five saving ground in here. And then Spielberg is kind of outside off the pace there. The pace is moderate. You know, 48 half. Two's already starting to lose ground, just not on this level. And it's kind of as expected on the plot. We'll see. He's kind of a circle, unable to kind of keep up. Um, six starts to put a little bit more pressure on. You see essential quality kind of ranging up. Uh, that Spielberg kind of on the outside starting to make, make his advance. Um, essential quality has the jump. The video quality is not great, but the track conditions aren't great either. So it's a combination of both. Um, and then essential quality just, you know, in a drive and his class is just kind of taking over here. Um, Spielberg, kind of a clear second. Jackie's Warrior um, doing his best to hold in third as far as that goes. Um, three kind of staying on, five not doing much from there. I don't have a head on, but I don't think there's anything in this race that really kind of requires it um, necessarily for that. Um, but yeah, just kind of some overall thoughts. I mean, essential quality, and we pull up the grid. Um, we can go through kind of horse by horse, because we're only going to do these two races today, unless you guys have some questions about races today or some races from yesterday, whatever. Um, but so far, I mean, he's, he's, it was a good return race for him, um, which is tough to do. We saw some horses, um, notably in the Devona Dale yesterday, kind of falter coming back as, as three-year-old. So a good effort for him. It was a, was a favorable trip. Um, but I think it's just, you know, kind of what they wanted, um, showed his class and just kind of seems like at this point, um, just a, a, a steady horse. He's, he's consistent in the way that he can put himself in the race, still finishing, doesn't seem to have any stamina limitations. Um, he's not, I mean, to me, I, I think it's, it's personal preference, you know, of what you kind of want to see in a horse, whether it's like a real exciting to me, it's just, he's not, 
he's not overly exciting. I don't like watch his races and I'm like, oh my God, it's just, you know, he's amazing. He's, you know, this and that, but he's, there's so much to not knock because he's consistent. He's solid. I mean, four straight B pluses, that's pretty rare. Um, and again, he does have some favorable aspects to him, but I think that's his quality, uh, to his name because he's able to kind of just put himself in, in the race, um, so to speak. Um, we'll go through. So, you know, I think, I don't know where they're going to end up going. If they, I, I don't, I wouldn't be, I think it would be a bad decision to run on the rebel in two weeks. I think coming off the layoff and in that kind of spot, um, is not ideal. So we'll see where, where they end up going. Saf is day. Like I said, he's just below. I mean, he is below going into the race. He just needs much, much softer, much, much softer company. Um, the three, so yeah, being fractious in the gate, we noted that, was on hold behind and between horses, was probably a tough spot to return in, um, still pretty decent in, as far as a C plus, not quite to this level, really ambitious coming back in this spot, we'll kind of see where, where he kind of lands. Um, number four, Jackie's Warrior, I think at this point, um, you know, exposed in terms of distance, and, and maybe even exposed a little bit in terms of class. Um, just hasn't really, you know, hasn't quite progressed. Um, you know, you can make the case he's coming off the layoff, whatever, but um, just didn't show enough there. So it'll, you know, it'll be interesting. I'm sure they kind of go back to one turn, but um, he's got to kind of prove it. I mean, it, it looks more like one turn, but it just, it just visually, it's like I just wanted to see, just see more from him in that spot. Um, number five, Santa Cruiser. I mean, he's just gone backwards in terms of his form cycle, you know, race to race. I think this, this race is probably, you know, they're rushing him, shipping in in two weeks. So, you know, not the most ideal. But I, I think this, this, these two kind of projections here, turf and shorter, um, just might be where he ends up. I don't know if he's quite graded stakes caliber, but, you know, in an, an allowance in kind of the right spot, if they make these changes, um, that might work for him. He kind of looked like a turf horse back at Churchill, too, and kind of good at around that one turn. So it'll be interesting. Um, Woodhouse, you know, again, I kind of mentioned this on the feed that I, I, I thought his debut at Remington Park, even though it didn't earn, like, the strongest speed figure, I just thought visually was, like, a, a good effort for a horse that's going to go two turns first time and um, ran down, like, a one to five shot, I, I believe, in that race. Did I note it? Just so I'm not messing myself up here. Yeah, took over from, it was a one to five best of the speed. Um, was a little green, but just kind of overall, I just thought that was just kind of a, a really good race. It was a little bit against the flow, making that wide move. And so he was interesting in the allowance um, back on the 11th. And you can see a B earned a B, uh, broke slow, was covered up, made a move. So B, a winning type race for the level. But I was a little bit concerned, you know, with that race being a 70-day break, kind of first start back, taking on winners, that, that he might regress a little bit in the Southwest, which you can see speed figures-wise he did. But I thought that was a, you know, it was a credible effort for him. Again, they, they changed the running style up. They pushed him forward, you know, to kind of push the pace. Um, and, and just overall should just get some experience out of it. This is a horse, I mean, it would kind of be a big ask to come back in two weeks, but I, I they might. They might come back with this horse in two weeks. And I, I would expect they kind of go back to this type of running style here where they stalk and kind of come off the pace um, a little bit. And I think there's some, there's some upside there. He's just kind of a, a good trying type. Um, I, you know, Spielberg's effort, it was like nothing wrong with that. I think he's one that does want to be forwardly placed. Um, but again, I mean, he was a wide, you know, wide stocking trip, very clear second. Um, you know, obviously not the A string, quite the A string for Baffert, um, but a good effort. And just is going to kind of keep, keep kind of grinding along, um, you know, earning points and maybe maybe just kind of like in the Kentucky Derby is one of those horses that just kind of like, you know, you look at his record and you keep him in the superfecta because he just, you know, he's not brilliant. He's not super fast, but just, just stays on. So I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting for essential quality. I think he's probably, you know, with no surprises, um, not breaking any ground here saying he's probably the horse to watch going forward um, out of this race and, you know, continue, continue to get, get tested. Um, 
Let me see if I can close that. I don't know if there's anybody on chat, but if you guys have any questions on the Southwest um, or any Oakland stuff, otherwise I'll move on to Gulfstream Park to do the Fountain of Youth um, race. I'm going to hang out for, for a bit. Um, here's the plot. We can kind of look at it for um, the Fountain of Youth before we before we get into it. It's interesting in terms of um, in terms of speed figures for this race um, because it was the only two turn race on the card. So just kind of you know keep that in mind. Whatever. Um, I don't think there'll be any any kind of surprises on there. Um, another race that ran like you know pretty pretty true to the plot. Um, the one is doesn't have surface distance data, but he's like he's kind of hiding. He's hiding behind the, the two and the ten in here. Um, and was kind of and finished second from that spot. Um, the ten being show and then uh, big square here. Um, four and the three also squares, but uh, kind of faltered faltered in that spot. Um, the four was was making a change in terms of uh, surface um, coming off the turf, um, and then the three was. Was a stretch out. I know the three um, kind of showed a little bit of run. Maybe not quite on this level. Maybe not quite two turns. But um, we'll watch the race. I I haven't watched it too much. I think I watched it watched it live, obviously, um, and then one more time, I believe, since. So might pick some some things up as we as we go through here. Um, but let's see. Another one, the quality of video is not great, but whatever. Gulfstream doesn't, I couldn't find a, an official replay, so working with what we got. Um, pretty clean start, I guess five five off a little bit slow. Um, the eight ends up winning the race, and he's kind of worth kind of following. Let me pause it real quick. Um, do we need to take it back? Just because there's some, like, subtle trouble in that first turn. And I was kind of making you guys draw your eyes to the eight here, who ends up winning the race. Um, but there is, there's going to be some trouble with the seven, six, four, and three. Just, um, I don't think it was anything like overall, overall impact, impactful. Um, but you know, just kind of notice while they're, while they're kind of jockeying for position there. Seven's trying to get pushed out um, to kind of get position and gets kind of floated wide. A little bit of contact. Same thing with the six. Um, a little bit of contact there. The three was able to kind of tuck in inside. Three and four were those other kind of squares forwardly placed, pushing the pace. Um, three sitting in the pocket. Six deciding to kind of take back a little bit. Um, let's go to the plot real quick. Just so we can kind of see. So you got one forwardly placed. The three, uh, the four is pressing. The three is in the pocket. And then the seven, seven is wide. So that's pretty, pretty much... Um, we thought in terms of in terms of the plot, the two should have been forwardly placed, but wasn't for some weird reason. Um, we'll kind of follow his trip, but um, so far six is a little bit closer to the pace here as well. Back out. Yeah, I mean the two's not too far out of it, um, but chasing inside. I really hate how they switch this camera angle like that. It's like so annoying. Um, just like I don't know, I lose your like rhythm of watching a race, and then they bring it back for like a second. It's so bizarro. Um, but anyways, one kind of starts to separate a little bit. It's not a crazy fast pace um, for Gulfstream. And about 24, I went a little bit quicker in that second quarter, but but still, um, it's okay. Two kind of starts to move up a little bit, gets a little bit of a steady, a little bit of a shuffle right there. Um, maybe loses a little bit of momentum, but overall, I mean, if you're a classy type horse, um, to probably be able to overcome. The four is losing ground. You can see the 10. The 10 ends up finishing third, but he's right here on the outside. He kind of makes that move. I, 
probably bring it back a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Starts to already kind of make his move outside horses. Here's eight. Eight's kind of being like kind of pushed along a little bit um, at this point. You can kind of see. I know the video quality is not great, but you can go back and watch your own. And they move outside horses. Ten's making his move. Um, two moves off the inside, but it's just kind of grindy. The four is getting eased up on. He's already lost ground. No push at that point. Um, the one after pressure is kind of staying staying clear. The seven kind of grinding it out, but um, kind of a no keep. And then here comes the eight. He made that move on the outside. Bring it back. Just a little bit. So eight's getting pushed along here. Like I said before, it's covered up. Ten starts to make move. The eight's like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's go out here. Comes outside, gets outside behind some tiring horses. One pushed. Eight's making his move. A little bit late on the lead change, but really responding. I mean, strong finish. Finds his momentum, and then it's, yeah, I mean, it's game over at that point. Um, and then there's, I mean, there's really nothing, you know, nothing behind. Two, six, five, four, three, nine. Um, this horse is really not doing much from that spot. Some of them kind of losing ground. Uh, Josh, good morning. Um, thought the one ran well in this race at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, I mean, he did. He, I mean, he finished, you know, finished second. That's kind of the race. Um, you know, he was going to, he was going to run, took pressure, did well. Um, let me, in case I need to re-reference that, let me not quite, quite close that window, but, um, that's not the right way. Right. We'll pull up the right race, and we'll start with the one. Again, I mean, it's it's not that the that the one ran a bad race. I thought that was you know like you said that the ran ran one ran well. Um, he did. It was his first start around two turns, so obviously a test. I mean, they did the right thing, put the horse on the lead. He took pressure. He faltered late. But going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, the most important thing with with the notes is. Do you want the one back in a similar spot in a two-turn race? Like, is there going to be improvement for the one under similar conditions? And I, I just, you know, I don't think so. I think that, you know, this was kind of um, the race you're going to get from him going around two turns. I don't see that there's much upside from it. If he finds a group that's maybe a little bit, um, a little bit softer, you know, or something like that, then, then yeah. But I mean, kind of what you see is what you get at this point. Um, there's not a lot of upside and competition is going to get tougher, maybe get a little bit more classier pace pressure, you know, something like that. Um, you know, we'll have to see. And then also kind of, you know, moving, moving away from Florida. We see this, we see this kind of time and time again, a lot of Gulfstream horses, um, run really well at Gulfstream and then struggle elsewhere. His one race at Delta Downs, I, I you know, I, I'm not going to necessarily say it off of one race um, because, you know, the rider fell off. I mean, what are you going to do? I don't think that's a fault, a fault of the horse. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be another challenge to see how he handles when he ships out of town, um, whether he can kind of hold his form and then, you know, continue, continue to improve with more ground, which at this point to me is kind of questionable, but there's a, he's a quality horse, like, you know, no, no doubt about it. Um, let's look at the winner and then we'll kind of go through the, the rest of this field. Um, again, I mean, just, you know, a strong effort for him. Um, I think, uh, what we're kind of seeing with him, even though like speed figure isn't necessarily a progression um, necessarily. And again, like I said, to kind of start off, just keep in mind, it's the only two turn race on the card, you know, just be a little bit, you know, caution, cautionary of the speed figures, considering the winner. I mean, the place horse was forwardly placed throughout um, a good run. And it was just visually that's like, you know, showed showed some quality in that race. And I think that's kind of what um, a good horse tends to show you. Um, that they can kind of overcome some adversity, kind of figuring some things out, um, you know, going forward. Is Gulfstream similar to Laurel in the sense that horses run really well at those tracks and struggle elsewhere? Um, I, 
it, they can be. I, yes, <laughs> I think. I think in some ways, I feel like Laurel is just such like a, a special character in that sense. But Gulfstream has that characteristic as well. And to kind of note that, where was there was another horse on the Gulfstream card that we are watching live? Where was that? I think that was the ninth race. That five horse. Yeah. Okay. So if we just look at, you know, look at his record, which which isn't bad, but mm, yeah, let me just see that filter. It's a horse that just runs really well at Gulfstream Park, and not only that, but like shows shows tactical shows tactical speed at Gulfstream Park. Um. As well, where he didn't at the other tracks. Let me. I don't know if that's necessarily going to quite get the filter that I want. Um, but he didn't show speed here. Closed. That was a really strong race, actually, at Churchill Downs. But um, the other races, you know, he's running from he's running from off the pace. Um, Safi's other horse collaborate. What? Uh, what? Can you just remind me what what race or where the one mile is a faster figure? Where where at? Sorry, I'm getting like confused right now. Um, the one mile a faster figure than in the past race in race five. Oh, Gulfstream five um, is where. One, one in 14, then one in 14. I'm, I'm, Al, Al for 2008, I'm getting really confused right now. So, Safi's other horse collaborate, that must be something totally separate. The one mile faster figure race five, Gulfstream race five, than the one in 14. So, I collaborate is the four in Gulfstream race five, a faster figure than horse one in 14. Yeah, but, but the thing is, um, I'm going to pull this race up. Um, then, okay, no, 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 I'm good. Okay, I'm, I'm following now. So it's using the four, then the, then the one horse, faster figure than the one horse in race 14. Um, yeah, I mean, as, uh, you know, as noted, as far as, you know, the, the speed figures for this race, because it's the, the only two turn race on the card, I'd be like a little bit cautious. And then it's tough to, you know, it's tough to compare, um, you know, raw speed figures when you have horses doing, you know, two completely separate things. I mean, a two turn race, a one turn race, a maiden special weight race, um, versus a grade two race. There's just, there's so many differences. Um, where, where class comes into play, then try to just compare, you know, the speed figure A to speed figure B. Um, this is what I'm going to have to go back and look at, but um, in terms of to, like, fully analyze, let me do this. But it looks like, you know, getting a, getting a lone lead as well, which is the case with, with Collaborate here, um, makes makes a difference in terms of speed figures as as well you know kind of not he looks like he had a little bit of pressure here from the inside horse who was a 90 to one shot um but that certainly makes a big difference and then at Gulfstream Park we can see kind of more than not where those um you know kind of a strung out field at the, at the end but that's a race I, I'm gonna have to go back kind of go back and and watch but I would be just kind of cautious just comparing like those two speed figures because there's so many, so many different, so many different variables. 
Uh, just something to watch. Red, where he's being touted as more of a distance runner than the one in race 14. Um, yeah, I mean, a, again, I'm going to have to kind of go back um, and look and look at him visually. But but drain the clock, that was kind of what I was saying earlier. In terms of distance, he's not necessarily one I'm going to see that's, that's going to continue to move forward as the distances increase. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, where, where the four um, – let me go back to that, actually. I just want to pull up kind of all those races just so that I'm getting a. Picture, um, you know, showing showing improvement. Obviously, there's some there's some quality there. So I would imagine at this point, you know, ran a, ran a solid race first out. Um, you know, and they stretch out in distance so that one turn one turn mile in the second start that they'll probably run two turns next time out. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, he, he looks solid running above par in both races. Um, and we'll see, you know, I, I would imagine that, you know, they do end up going two turns next time out, um, with the horse. Let me, um, you know, let me, since we're, I can't, I, the Gulfstream replays like aren't up. But I'm going to watch it here. I'm just not going to show the video um, on screen because I have to watch it. I'm going to watch it on RTN. And um, RTN will, like, I don't know. They'll try to, like, disable my entire channel if I show this replay there. So let's just better safe than sorry. I'll try to talk it through um, as we go. So um, this is the fifth race, main special weight race. We're looking at the number four. And looking at him in terms of, um, like you said, stretching stretching out in distance um, going forward. All right. So they're off here. Um, gets out in front. Mostly on mostly on his own, which is which is good to see too because of that first start where he broke slow and was off the pace. So he kind of gets out in front on his own. The rider has him under a hold. Yeah, that long shot kind of pushing from the inside. Couple horses, uh, you know, right off, right off his tail, right off his hip. Um, mild pressure from the eight. The seven's already dropping back. Um, the Ford's, I mean, just he's a really nice looking horse. Just physically, you know, physically is very, very athletic. Um, Good, good mover. No fractions. That's cool. Thanks, Gulfstream. Um, so hard to hard to know like how fast they're going right now. Um, another horse kind of comes up. The one's already gone. Six starting to make a move on the outside. I imagine the pace is probably pretty honest because the six kind of starts to move from off the pace here. Um, the eleven's a no keep. Four separating off that turn. Kind of changes leads on cue. The six was that only challenge. He just kind of flattened out on that left lead. Um, but yeah, uh, I he definitely looks like um, it is. It's a, it's a visually you know impressive effort, and he looks physically two turns. I would I would imagine. Um, I, I mean I guess what's the option now? They got to go Florida Derby, right? So. Um, and honestly, wouldn't be wouldn't be that bad of a spot at this point because um, if they say, oh, thank you, twenty three, three forty six, and one eleven, yeah, Florida Derby, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's the timing is good, like spacing wise, um, for him. And you just think at this point, greatest honor. We'll go back to uh, greatest honor here. At this point, with um, greatest honor, you know, obviously kind of asserting himself as sort of the, the horse down there that's, you know, nobody's really touching him at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you have a horse like the number four who has tactical speed, has that kind of high cruising speed, um, and has, ta has a lot of upside, um, you know, it, it's a big ask, right? You're going to go two turns for the first time, first time in graded stakes company, all that stuff to be tested. But with that type of running style, um, especially if they don't run this horse, um, then just could be, you know, a, a threat from a pace advantage standpoint. Um, and then whether he's up to the class, you know, kind of remains to be seen. 
um, you know, all that ty- type of stuff. I mean, he's kind of playing playing catch up at this point in the season. But um, you know, I, I I'm glad you pointed that horse out because there's he does look like he has some upside off that trip, which is not always the case with horses that get those big like front running scores. Sometimes it could just be like so circumstantial where nobody is running behind them or just visually you're like, they did it, but you know, it's kind of a B I would be plus in this case um, going forward. I think we looked at, where do we leave off? We did greatest honor. Okay. Um, look at the 10 who finished third. I mean, at this point he's just, um, you know, a, another horse that probably just needs some drop needs a drop in class. He's just not on quite to the graded stakes level. A good trying horse, maybe one that can kind of hit your exotics in the right spot at the right price. But um, just overall class-wise is not quite there. This is the seven that finished fourth. And the same thing here. Um, I mean, Baffert's not getting rid of good horses. You know what I mean? Um, and I think we've seen we've seen what what Tarantino can do at this point. Um, not much, not much upside on, on that front. Who else is in this race? Prime factor. Yeah. Just, I mean, hard, <laughs> tough, tough to just, you know, there, there was no excuse in my opinion. I know we studied a little bit, um, but uh, kind of just overall, I mean, there was kind of no, no excuse for him in the Holy Bowl. Yeah. You can make the case. It's a second start. He's taking on winners, greatest stakes, blah, blah, blah. But just, you know, you want to like, have some reason to kind of endorse him going forward and there wasn't and there's certainly nothing to endorse coming out of the fountain of youth that trouble wasn't enough for me to be like this is a horse coming back in the florida derby that you know is going to just take a big step forward um you know i don't know what what pletcher's going to do kind of with him at this point um but kind of needs a turnaround this the three um had had that little bit of trouble early kind of flattened out um the four kind of the same thing he was a little bit involved in that that incident in the first turn chased chased the pace and then and then faded um coming off a layoff had pretty much been running on the turf so maybe a prep race for him you know taking a shot here nothing to lose coming back off off the bench but i would i would imagine they they switch back to turf um with fire at will i don't think there was probably much positive intent in this spot today um you know just one of those, like, let's run them. We've got nothing to lose, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they will likely get back to the turf. Um, five did absolutely no running. Um, six was one of those that was kind of part part of those horses that was kind of bunched up early, but was quickly, quickly faded. Um, doesn't quite seem on this level. The seven we did, the eight we did. Um, the nine is the only other horse. Just didn't do much running in there. So, um yeah, I mean, I think that's that's pretty much, you know, there's kind of one horse out of that race kind of going forward to kind of keep an eye on as far as being a solid contender. A lot of these other horses are just going to need changes in terms of class, you know, distance, um, the one. But I'm glad I'm glad you pointed out um, collaborate, collaborate, because um, that's kind of one that's that's worth a follow there. Um, all right. So. That's pretty much it. We covered those two stake races um, from yesterday as far as kind of derby prep. Um, yeah, I'm not playing on streaming today. Um, Thursday, kind of up in the air. Um, next Saturday for sure, uh, we'll stream. I'm trying to think where most of the action is. I think it's, I was looking at the calendar earlier, but. Anyways, we'll definitely stream on, on Saturday for sure. And whether I end up doing a Thursday stream or not, it's kind of up in the air. Um, any last questions? Otherwise, I'll end the stream for today. And again, you can always um, access, if you miss any part of this, you can access the archive either here on Twitch or um, follow, follow on YouTube, my channel on YouTube, because I'm uploading the videos there as well, uh, which is important because Twitch um, lets me archive the streams. But then after then after two weeks, um, then after two weeks, they get rid of them. So which is, you know, the archive will be on YouTube regardless. Uh, Gulfstream 12. Let's talk about that race because that race is such a mess. This is the race that was like the 140K Superfecta race.
Mm. Yeah. So I'll leave it up here for now. Um, you know, the one uh, was able to just kind of take advantage on the front end and, it, and in two ways just kind of work the trip. I mean, one took pressure and stayed on. So, so credit to her, but I think also benefit from the fact that so many horses in this race, um, just didn't show up. And I think that that kind of aided her, um, in this case, um, still kind of waiting for a speed figure on there, but, um, you know, even if it's like a big number, um, coming back, it would be at this point, kind of an outlier compared to the other races. I'm going to go through this field real quick. Um, the three was favored, obviously, had kind of the strongest speed figures going into the race. Um, and maybe, you know, you can make the case, you know, coming off the layoff, as we mentioned earlier, you know, horses can be hit or miss at Gulfstream. This is our first start at Gulfstream. Not the, not the time you want to, like, necessarily take a short price, even though it certainly made sense. Um, will be interesting to kind of see where she's at going forward. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not, given those kind of scenarios that I just mentioned, I'm not super harsh on yesterday's race because it's just, there, there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong. Not a horse I'm super excited to like bet back off that race, but also at the same time, not one that I would be very, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all if she just, you know, that's, that's a one-off. And ends up ends up moving forward. You can even see going back to I know the debut. It's like it, a fine race, finished second, but but was able to kind of improve with racing too. So that's just something something to keep in mind there. Um, Carlin's catch. We talked about it um, before with her. Just where just hadn't quite shown the speed bigger progression for the graded stakes level. So I think there's upside for her, but upside for her probably with with a softer softer group. Um, listed stakes, some stakes races at Woodbine, I believe. Is she, uh, she has stamps on part. Yeah, she's, yeah. So, so some stakes races up at Woodbine, um, which starts, you know, right around the corner, all things, you know, fingers crossed, um, in April. Um, so I think that's probably a better circuit for her, uh, to run on. The five is another one. I thought this trip was, there was, there was some upside in it, a, a totally, you know, a bad effort considering she was the second choice and, and made a lot of sense. But you can kind of make the same case. I mean, coming off, coming off the layoff, um, running at Goldstein Park for the first time wasn't a good start for her. I think that's where this trip was a little bit sneaky because she kind of moved up early into position, kind of settled behind horses and then kind of made another subtle move before before backing out and just kind of one of those races that's like this wasn't ideal wasn't quite the most ideal spot um and you know another one that's i i could definitely see some upside with um crazy beautiful so she finished second ran ran from off the pace i believe broke slow i'm trying to just go off memory but but ran on late um finished you know kind of a clear second was mostly kind of passing tired at that point um, I have to kind of see with her, um, could probably move forward. I mean, Ken McPeak's horses typically kind of run that pattern where they, they improve with racing. Um, just sort of overall, you know, just looking at kind of B's, B minus, C plus, um, you know, nothing that's like overly exciting about her at this point in, on this kind of level when you're, when you're thinking Kentucky Oaks, I think, um, probably the stronger horses at this point, in my opinion, are, are at Oaklawn and at, um, at Fairgrounds. Anna SP 387. Thank you for the follow. Um, so we'll have to see, you know, what these horses competitive speed. Um, another one that was just kind of like third by default, right? That race just kind of slowing late, passing tired horses. Um, and was able to just kind of hold third at that big, you know, almost 54 to one. Um, number 10. Um, I mean, just a complete outsider. You just look at her speed figures going in. I mean, just absolutely below. Um, for the level they were going to run here for an optional 50 that's probably where she belongs so i think that's that's that on there um the 11 same thing um could have some upside here you know lightly raced pretty tough spot um second off um but overall i mean just not not quite not quite on this level oops one more to go um and, and the same thing same thing with the with the 12 um not not on the graded stakes caliber. Not on the graded stakes caliber. 
Um, love your opinion on race at Santa Anita. Perhaps the best performance of the day in the stakes race. I know this race. This is Rock Your World, yeah? Mm. Um, I wrote about this race, just FYI, I wrote about this race on, um, for, on the Santa Anita website for the Optics EQ race of the day. I also had Rock Your World as best bet, um, on daily selections at, at Brisnet. Um, and it was kind of a, always insightful hearing your thoughts on the races thing for sharing. Thank you for, for watching. Um, I, I appreciate it. It's, it's kind of, uh, when, I, when I'm here talking to myself, it's, like, very discouraging that I'm like, oh, why am I even doing this? Why am I wasting my time? So, honestly, I, I really, I really appreciate uh, you guys being on the stream. So, with uh, with Rock Your World, um, his debut, obviously, the B-plus, best of the speed and was wide. He showed a lot of ability kind of going before the debut, just training in the morning and watching his works. And a, a strong B-plus. And it was encouraging, you know, they gave him a little bit of time, those 57 days, and kind of seemed like they were they were pointing to this race with him. You know, you just kind of figure a horse that's ran a really good race on debut, um, like it, it, for connections, it's like, okay, where do we go next, right? And you have a horse, it's like, okay, we, we're probably going to stretch out. Let's pick the right spot. And I think this race just kind of made sense. He was training well. Um, it, it was an impressive effort because he's still green. You can st you can still see it because he's he's pushing the pace, sitting kind of right off um, right off the pace setter, uh, the number four who needs just softer and a shorter distance. But he's sitting kind of right off and kind of coming around the turn. Uh, Rispoli's kind of like pushing like pushing along, and it, there's like not there's like a moment where Rocket World's like, what are we doing? Like what's what's happening? And he, and he just kind of stays with them and you just start to see like all of a sudden Rocket World's like, Oh, I'm I'm a horse. I'm in a, I'm in a horse race and he just finds another gear. He doesn't ever change leads, but I just think it's a it's a good effort from him, um, in terms of like a race that being lightly raced, only a second start, and being able to move forward um, uh, from that race. So so I was impressed. Not quite impressed enough to give him a B plus. But I think there's some upside there. Uh, Anna SP387, do you ever bet the Australian races? I I used to, but I, I don't anymore. I mean, part of it is just like I only have so much energy that I can put into the races. And secondly, I start really early in the morning. And so the Australian races are pretty much like past my bedtime. Um, but there is a streamer. Uh, let me make sure the name. Lord Pi8737. Hold on, let me get the name because he streams um, the Australian races and harness late at night. Always when I'm trying to like look at this on the fly. Um, Lord Pi eighty five. Let me write that in here. Follow Um, he does the, the Australian races. His feed is, is really fun too. Um, it does the Australian harness. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Maybe one day, but, um, yeah, as of now, it's just past my bedtime to be perfectly honest. Um, and you know, we're, the system I'm working right now, optics, where we don't cover Australia either. Maybe eventually it's a whole like licensing deal with the data that's not really worth getting into on here, but it's a little bit messy. So, um, yeah, we just have to do the uh, uh, North American racing um, at the moment. We'll go through the rest of this field. Um, Captain Peak, and part of the reason I made Rock Your, Rock Your World um, the best bet yesterday was because I figured Captain Peak was going to be a big favorite, and I, I thought we could beat him, and, 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 and it worked out. But no real knocks against Captain Peak, but has just been, it's 1 to 20 a.m. Oh my God. This is like, that's like the time that I'm like, oh, one more hour and then I'll wake up, you know? So it's crazy. Um, he had just had those favorable trips in kind of both starts, and there was really nothing to knock. 
But when you have a horse that's had favorable trips and they're going to be a short price um, and you have a good alternative, it's just kind of the time to kind of take them on and, and see what they're really made of. And, and it worked out there. Um, number three red flag, let's, we're going to put a follow next to him, okay? Because there's a couple patterns in here that are, that are interesting. Um, we'll go back to the debut. So he debuted at Del Mar, um, you know, broke slow and had G Gonzalez aboard. Um, sprinting so kind of just look like look like a prep and so if we look at this pattern here you know they're, they're going to go two turns on the turf um, you know whatever run unless it's safe but but Gonzalez is aboard so that was just kind of one of those tells to me that was like I don't think they're fully in it today um, they're probably going to give this horse a race it doesn't really matter the surface it doesn't really matter the distance just want to get him a race and and ran a good race so ran a b minus was wide um just a, a perfect race for this horse you know coming back 70 days first start as a three-year-old so we'll see where where he ends up i'm sure they go back to the main track um whether it's two turns or one turn um this race here um where he was favored in the Los Alamitos Futurity was just such a botched ride. Um, started to move up inside, had to hit the brakes, um, and then struggled to find his momentum after. So it was just kind of one of those. It was just not not a great trip. Speed figure wise is going to have to move forward. He's definitely not like a top you know Derby contender at this point. But um, I imagine that's where what we'll kind of see him in one of the greatest stakes here in California, and has some has the ability to move forward. Um, Commander Kai, like I mentioned, um, not quite the quality, not quite the stamina um, for him. We'll kind of see um, where he kind of shakes out. The five we talked about, and the six Harlan Estate. I thought that was kind of sneaky good. He ran on late which isn't necessarily like the easiest trip on the Santa Anita turf course right now to come from off the pace. Uh, maybe not quite on the level, might need, need a little bit of class relief. So in this, in the right spot, um, kind of worth, worth a follow there. Um, all right. I think that, I think that covers it for that race um, there today. All right. Anything else or I will end the stream. And again, just a reminder, uh, you can check the, if you missed any part of this stream, um, you can check the replay on Twitch or over on the YouTube channel where all the live streams and everything is, is uploaded on there. And um, I'll put this one up um, on YouTube soon, but I think it should be, I think it's on Twitch like right away. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Much appreciate it. I appreciate, you know, good questions um, and bringing, bringing attention to collaborate. That was, that was awesome. Um, totally cool for doing that. All right, you guys, um, good racing luck today and, um, we'll see you next time.